support this podcast at patreon.com forward slash Chris Carl Photography Podcast. these episodes is anytime we have someone new come on is we have to frame how it is that you found photography and how you got started with photography so what was it that got you going well uh thanks for having me uh definitely a pleasure pleasure to be here um you know i i got into photography a little bit later in life um obviously i, I just turned 40 this past may um and uh, my first real camera was purchased uh just about a year and a half ago so uh the end of 2018 approximately um, so that was my first time actually handling a camera. Uh, prior to that, um, I was taking photos off my iPhone. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into photography, but I, I really feel that, um, maybe I was, I was kind of primed at an early age, um, you know, being father's day and all today. Um, my grandfather, my father, uh, they were big into photography themselves. Um, I always remember, um, when I was a child, uh, listening, uh, you know, listening to stories and, and obviously going through slideshows with them. And most of the stuff was done on rangefinders, um, you know, black and white photography. And that's kind of always stuck with me. Um, being in that kind of athletic childhood, I, I got kind of away from, uh, the arts and more into athletics, um, got out of college and then, uh, went right into work. But now I'm at a point in my life where, um, it is, it is fun to have a hobby that does, uh, allow me a little bit of uh, freedom. Um, to express my uh, artistic side a little bit. What was it that held you back for so long from going into it? If it's something that's in the family, yeah, good question. Um, you know, I, I think it was. Um, I was uh, really through in, until the end of my collegiate years. You know, I, I was still under the fascination that I'd be a professional baseball player. Um, so, you know, even though my my uh, my grandfather was uh, big into photography, he was uh, also you know, and he was in a band, uh, a jazz band back in the day. Um, so definitely the, the arts were definitely in the family. Um, and my father would always, uh, take photography, uh, you know, uh, on trips. Uh, he was a kind of a semi-pro, uh, rugby player back in his twenties and thirties. But, um, I, I, I really wish I would have gotten back into it, but, um, I think athletics kind of took, took me away. And then I got right into, I'm in like a, a finance type career, um, where I'm working, you know, uh, 60 to 80, you know, hours potentially a, a week. Um, so there's really just not a lot of time and building my career through that. Um, I'm now, you know, uh, 17 going on 18 years into that career. So, um, I, I find there's a little bit more freedom, um, to, um, to do photography. Uh, and obviously the recent, uh, you know, pandemic has, uh, we're all working from home these days. So, uh, no more commuting, um, uh, you know, an hour each way to work. So it, it provides me a little bit more freedom to, to in the morning, get up and, and take a run with my, my, my camera and, and, uh, start shooting early. Well, just let's dive into what camera you're using at the moment. What's your, what's your, uh, go-to camera? Yeah. So, um, and again, this is, uh, I have a very limited history of cameras, but, um, I do have a, I have a Leica QP. Um, it's a fixed lens. Actually, I got it right here. Uh, Leica QP, uh, fixed lens. It's a Sumalux, uh, 28 mil, um, wide lens. Uh, I love that kind of look. Um, especially when, it, when you, when you look at it through a, through a black and white kind of filter. Um, I, I enjoy, uh, that it kind of looks timeless to me. Um, it's definitely something that, that really engages me and, and, uh, kind of inspires me to take, take more photos and kind of really stretch my, um, uh, you know, stretch what I do on a day-to-day basis with my camera and I, I carry it everywhere. It's a, it's a beautiful camera to look at. It's a fun camera to hold. Uh, it's super simple to use, especially for someone like a novice like myself. Um, as soon as I picked it up and turned it on, it's very, um, it can be as simple as you need it with a lot of the auto functions through the, uh, autofocus, um, uh, auto aperture, auto ISO, ISO, um, auto shutter, but then it can be as, as, uh, as complicated as, as going full manual, um, which I'm still getting used to and still learning. And that's probably one of my biggest, uh, opportunities to growth in photography would be kind of understanding more about that. Well, you've mentioned black and white, obviously. Um, the vast majority, if not all of what I've seen of yours is, is black and white imaging. What is it about black and white that you're so drawn towards? I, I think that it's maybe a little bit two part. Um, one part would be kind of 
uh, it does seem, uh, it seems timeless. It seems vintage. It does feel, it feels like it would stand the test of time. You know, as I look at my, my grandfather was in, in world war II, um, and some of his old photos and he was, uh, you know, uh, I, I really kind of look back at those, those pictures and I'm, I'm, uh, they do provide a lot of inspiration for what I kind of do today. Um, and my photography is very slice of life kind of, uh, photography. Um, and uh, the second part, so one part would be kind of my history in it. And I do, uh, I've always liked black and white, but second part would be right as I got my camera, I, I, uh, was very lucky. Alan Schaller, which I'm not sure you've heard of. He's a, a UK, yeah. um, photographer. I'm sure you have, um, yeah. black and white photographer. And he, he did a, did a workshop, uh, in San Francisco and he's just a, he's a, he's a real technician, uh, like a real, real craftsman, um, um, of, of the trade and of the craft and of, of photography. And he's, um, definitely speaks a lot to finding your voice, you know, through photos and finding, finding a, um, finding a way to, to show emotion through photography. And, and I believe, you know, in, in my, my point of view, you can do it through color, but I feel like I do it best through black and white. And it's just simplifies, it simplifies my, my process. Um, I'm, I'm in a big city. I live right downtown San Francisco. Um, very similar to like a, like a, a downtown LA where at times of the day, it's like a conveyor belt of people on, on the side of those and on the streets. So if you're, if you're a street photographer, um, trying to keep your, your settings and as your, your, the way you're, way, the way you view, um, uh, the frame as simple as possible and just allows you to opens you up to a lot more opportunities. And, uh, when I, when I get into my color features, uh, I, I kind of get lost in trying to color match a little bit, you know, uh, you know, yellow car, yellow hat kind of a deal. And I, I kind of lose, um, I lose my flow. Right. In your opinion, what is it that makes a good black and white image? Oof. Um, you know, I think it's, there's, there's multiple parts to it. I, I think, um, you know, you, you gotta have light and obviously that's, that's the number one thing is if you don't have light, you don't, you don't, it's going to be a super flat photo. Uh, especially black and white. So the shadows, the, the, the contrast in the photo has definitely got to be, got to be big. Um, the second thing has got to be, you know, your, your composition. So what's in the photo. So if you just have shadow and there's nothing to, to compose it with, that's going to be nothing. Um, but then you got to have, I mean, that third part uh, in my mind would be like some sort of an emotion or some sort of a figure, some sort of a shape. Um, so if you can have all three of those, you have the light, uh, you have the composition and, and you got that, that emotion that you can kind of bring into it with either a person or a shape. Um, I think is, is huge. And then, you know, I think, I think, uh, kind of the intimacy and I, I feel I'm, I'm getting better into that. I, I think that's what kind of, uh, excites me about street photography is, is being intimate with the subject without them knowing you're there. Kind of that, um, I guess like kind of like a Joel Meyerowitz kind of talks about like the invisibility game, you know, mm -hmm. be able to take a photo without people knowing that you're, you're taking the photo and, and kind of having that real candid genuine emotion that I feel, yeah. uh, you lose when, when you, when you pose people uh, at times, um, just from my, my point of view. In terms of, I mean, you've talked about composition, obviously I think everyone's looking for the good light. You're in California, so you've got an abundance of it. Um, beyond looking at light patterns, what is it that's your favorite compositional tool? You know, my, my go-to, and I need to get away from it a little bit, but one thing that's really drawn to me, you get, you give me kind of like an overcast sky and a silhouette. And it, that kind of draws me like a moth to a flame. Um, hmm. but that's like, that's the simple stuff. But I, I mean, um, you know, I am blessed. Like you said, I live in downtown San Francisco. So the buildings are amazing. The architecture is very pretty. Um, very similar, to like a, like a, like a London. Um, so, uh, uh, I, I, you know, you, you, you give a, a good, uh, a good subject, you know, crossing, you know, right in front of you. And, uh, he's thinking about whatever he's going to have for dinner, what he's going to buy his wife or, for her birthday. And, and I come across just kind of unknowingly take a shot with him, just thinking about the deeper things about the world. And, uh, and you can get that posed against a backdrop of a, of a, of a building or a, or a landscape. And I kind of, I get a, get a kick out of stuff like that. Photographing San Francisco is obviously going to be, um, there's a potential there that you could end up taking tourist photos, I guess, because it is a town that's got a pretty big, uh, a city that's got a pretty big tourist industry. How do you go about avoiding taking the sort of cliche photos? Good point. Um, and, and that's, uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm, when I'm out and about, you know, playing that kind of lost tourist, um, kind of shooting photos over people's head and acting like you're shooting behind them or something like that is, is kind of a, 
a shtick, I guess, that, that uh, a lot of street photographers do. Um, but trying to stay away from it is, you know, going to areas that, I mean, uh, um, I don't see a ton of tourists in certain parts of Chinatown um, and San Francisco. Um, you know, heading to the, I live closer to the Embarcadero where there's like, there's a big ferry building. That's a big, they have a big, uh, big market there on the weekends. Um, that's kind of where I spend a lot of my time because uh, I live on that side of the town. Um, but I, I, you know, as much as I try to find areas that, um, are maybe off the beaten path, I am, I'm a sucker for a bridge photo. I mean, anything with, you know, the Bay bridge in the background, it's such an iconic, um, you know, slice of where I live, um, in my home. Um, it's in kind of a lot of my photography and I feel like I maybe overdo it at times, but at the end of the day, I mean, I, I'm just creating, uh, again, I'm a, a photographer that's not doing this for the, for the almighty dollar. I'm really just trying to build a, um, a portfolio that I can look back on at a certain time in my life and, um, uh, you know, be able to, uh, reminisce on, on what it was like to be, to be, um, in San Francisco at this time, point in time. Uh, not to show off, um, my lack of fitness here, but having visited San Francisco myself, I do know how enduring it is, um, to walk with, with the many hills and whatnot. Um, is, is fitness something you have to bear in mind when you're planning out a route in terms of, you know, you've got the hot weather, You've got uh, lots of foot traffic and you, you're also going to have to compete with the sort of terrain of the city. Yeah, definitely. Uh, San Francisco is a, is a, is a hilly beast um, in, in certain parts. So, um, uh, yes, I mean, I, I, and I guess my, um, the way I attack my photography uh, when I'm going out to shoot on, a, on an everyday basis, which I, I do try to shoot, uh, you know, every day, um, is I'll get up early. I'll get up, you know, as the sun rises and I'll head out towards, uh, you know, I'll take, and I'm a we- I'm a little bit weird when this comes, Chris. I'm, I I run with my rangefinder. So if you ever see a, a guy in London <laughs> running on the side of the road with with a rangefinder, you're you're gonna more chances than not it may be me. Um, so I would I would go on a, like a you know a walk jog or something in the morning, um, and I'll have my rangefinder either strapped on my back or in my hand. Um, and yeah, I'll I'll um, you know uh, you know there's there's definitely a lot of hills. Um, it's definitely a kind of a spaced out city, but it's pretty, pretty sectioned off by, by, by parts. Like there's North beach, which is the Italian district. And there's Chinatown, which is kind of connected to that. And then there's union, uh, uh, union square, which is connected through a tunnel, uh, to Chinatown. And that's where I love, I have a lot of shots that I take in that tunnel, uh, between Chinatown and union square. Um, but yeah, San Francisco is definitely, it's, um, it's, it's, it's interesting just cause it is, there's a lot of the have and the have nots, right? So there's um, a lot of parts that are very nice. And then there's parts that are um, very tough. And that's the kind yeah. of the reality of um, a lot of big cities these days. But um, um, I, I, I don't discriminate on, on different parts of, um, of the city. I find it all uh, beautiful uh, in its own way. Do you know what? I'm going to take a little detour from where I wanted to go because of how you've ended that. There's an image on the uh, main page of your website, which is, a guy like having a drink in a dumpster. <laughs> good, good photo. Yeah, yeah, I love the photo. I just wondered how it came about. Yeah, good. Uh, that's a great question. I was, I was, um, I, I'm interested you pulled that one up. Um, so that one's actually, it was actually in Portland. Um, and I'm actually from Oregon, which is kind of the, the middle of the three states on the, the West Coast of the uh, uh, United States. So Washington State, Oregon, and California. And I grew up in Oregon. So I have a lot of family in that Portland area. So we're in Portland. Um, and actually, 98% of my photos, 95% of my photos were just candid shots. This is, this is one of the photos that was staged. I'll, I'll be hundred percent honest with you. Um, he was a guy that I met as an early morning run with my camera. Uh, I saw him on the side of the street and obviously he looks the part. I mean, he looks like he came right out of a, uh, you know, a seventies, you know, Rolling Stones, uh, catalog. And it just happens to be, he's actually the lead singer uh, of a, of a small punk band called the cry. Um, and I, I kind of tagged him in the photo. If you go to like my Instagram page, you can see it's tagged in it. But, um, um, anyways, uh, so he was actually just out and about and I think he was having a hard night, uh, or a, yeah, long, a long night Wait, I'm sure he was still, still a little bit drunk, but, um, he, uh, wanted me to take some photos of him and he, uh, he willingly jumped in that, uh, that dumpster and, um, he did have a uh, empty bottle of whiskey with him and he was, uh, yeah, that's, that's the shot. Took a couple of frames and, uh, that was it. But, uh, it's kind of a fun one, but uh, yeah, that I one. think it's a phenomenal photo. I absolutely love it. It's it's got so much texture <laughs> and so much expression to it. It's a great image. Um, I just, uh, I guess, being being from London, I can't imagine photographing someone in that situation without getting either punched or stabbed. So I guess the story that you've got kind of makes sense behind it. 
Yeah, there, there's a definitely story behind it, but um, it would have been uh, very interesting if I just would have looked in a dumpster and see this guy sitting there. But um, but no, there there's definitely a story behind that one. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, my first thought seeing the image wasn't so much about how did you get the image of the guy in the dumpster, but just how did you end up looking in the dumpster? But now that you've answered that, I guess I can put all of those worries to bed. Uh, yeah. So just to move back to San Francisco a little bit here, um, one of the things I remember very distinctly about San Francisco is just how colourful the whole place is. You've got a lot of old um, sort of nostalgic shop signs on top of new buildings. You've got um, the, like Chinatown, like you mentioned, is incredibly vibrant and colourful. Do you ever find yourself getting um, tempted to move away from black and white just by the, the colourful nature of the city? Um, I think maybe at first I did. Um, but um, it- as you see, I mean, I think uh, I, I maybe have one color photo in my whole um, Instagram page, and I I, um, I really do gravitate to the to the black and white, and I feel like it um, just the way my mind thinks, because um, I I you know I maybe uh, need to kind of slow my thoughts down at times, and I think the black and white does that for me when I look back at photo- photography a little bit. Um, it it definitely allows me to focus and kind of strips away a lot of the things that. Um, that are not important in the photo to me. I mean, I take photography for, for kind of the emotional piece of it, kind of the posterity piece of it. Um, so, um, I, I do enjoy a good photo. I mean, if you look at like, um, I was trying to think of like a UK photographer that I really love right now, like Matt Stewart or something like that. Someone that is just an, an impeccable, like just a real life technician in the, in the use of color and, uh, and shadows and contrast and just stuff like that. I mean, I am definitely envious of people that can do it. But I really feel um, with the amount of time that I have to to put to photography, um, I'm really just excited about just kind of honing my craft uh, in the black and white space. And um, I really feel like you can you can really grow, uh, even if it is as simple as black and white. You can still continue to to kind of explore new parts of uh, the black and white photography. And you've been photographing the protests. I was just wondering about, from a photographer's point of view, how that's been to document. Has it been difficult? Has it been sort of temperamental? What's it been like to actually document it? It's been uh, definitely eye-opening. Um, it's a, um, it's it's definitely a, uh, uh, you know, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a big issue. Um, I don't know if I'm too prepared to talk about right now, but yeah, it's a, definitely a big concern we have right in America and. You know, um, I definitely felt it was my, um, I definitely wanted to get out there and, and, um, you know, document what, uh, what was going on in the streets of San Francisco. And I felt like I could try to, um, not show one side or not, you know, try to be able to kind of give both sides of the, um, of the protest. I mean, there's definitely the, the side of the police, there's the side of, uh, the black lives matter and, um, um, all of it and to try to be able to just document it. Um, and it's, there's a lot of emotion in this thing right now. And, um, and I really feel like it's, um, the, the, it's bringing attention and shedding light to a, to a subject that's been ignored for, um, for a long time uh, and not just in America, but you know, across the, across the world. But, um, but yeah, it's been, uh, it's been exciting. Um, there's been a lot of protests, um, a lot of news. And I think, you know, you know, right now with a lot of people having phones and, you know, cameras and, you know, everyone's got an Instagram account these days, it, it does help people kind of shed light on, on what's really going on in the streets, um, versus kind of looking at the polarizing, you know, vision of, you know, a CNN or a Fox news, which has one side or the other kind of polarized. Um, so it does kind of give us, it it gives us an opportunity to, to kind of uh, show what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that obviously I, I'm not I'm I'm not um, I'm not here to talk about the politics of it too much because I don't think it's an English person's um, prerogative to be trying to frame the politics. And I also think for me to do it in a way, like you say, that doesn't just go one way or the other, I would have to do an awful lot of research myself into the people that would be the right people to come in and speak on the subject. As far as the politics goes, I think it's 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 all out there for people to to follow. And my uh, my interest with it is the the documentation is it is it something that you found intimidating or were you ever distracted and kind of forgot to document stuff because it was obviously such a such a huge movement not necessarily um and that sounds kind of odd because I, I had a couple people ask me that too like wow that must have been kind of intense and um when i get into when i get into my photography i guess you could say like i don't want to sound kind of like um like full of myself but like get like into like a zone right like i think we all kind of get that like in whatever habit or kind of uh whatever kind of um, 
practice or profession that you're in. And, um, this is just a hobby for myself at this point, but you, you kind of get into a zone and I, and I kind of felt like I just kind of started, you know, uh, seeing things and, in, in obviously in the black and white, my, my, my camera, the feedback on my camera is, is black and white. So it's not like I convert to black and white afterwards. So I'm actually seeing through the, the viewfinder as black and white. And it, and it does, um, it just, it just, it, you kind of get in a zone and you kind of feel like you can really start seeing things uh, happen and you kind of see, start seeing like, um, kind of events going on and you can kind of feel the story kind of building as you're taking mm-hmm. photo, uh, photos. And, um, so yeah, it was, um, surprisingly very calm. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, there was no real, not too aggressive. Um, you know, I know there was some looting and stuff that happened later in the evenings and stuff, but, uh, the rest of it was, uh, very calm and, and the protests were, um, we're kind of on point with their message. Uh, in, in a day-to-day sense, um, over the time that you've been doing this, what's been your sort of shooting style? Are you someone, I mean, you mentioned earlier about sort of playing the lost tourist, but do you shoot from the hip a lot? Do you do a lot of um, sort of plant yourself and wait for the right moment? How do, how do you go about your actual shooting time? <sighs> good, good question. Um, since I, since this, uh, obviously it's like a camera that I got, that's, it's, you know, obviously a range finder, a great viewfinder in it. Um, really b- before, you know, December of 2018, I didn't, I've never looked through a viewfinder except for, you know, playing with other people's cameras and stuff like that. So I was, you know, when I was shooting with my iPhone and stuff, it was always from the hip. So I think that that helps me in a way, uh, I mean, it helps and hurts, right? So I think it helps, uh, with, with street photography because I can make a shot happen that maybe uh, a person wouldn't be aware of. Um, so I, I do take a lot of hip for shooting from the hip, um, kind of pre-focusing and just making sure I, I have all the right, the, you know, my right aperture and stuff like that set. But, um, I also think it maybe kind of hurts me a little bit cause I don't, uh, sometimes my composition is off. And if I would put the camera to my eye a little bit, um, and then wait for that composition to develop, I'd probably get a more in-depth photo. Um, so that's, uh, that part of it. Um, and I, I really do, you know, I really try not to look like a photographer if possible, if that's, if that's possible at times, um, by meaning I don't carry a backpack. I don't carry because I don't have an ability to put an extra lens on this camera at the like a, like a Q is a fixed lens. Um, so there's nothing for me besides an extra battery in my pocket. Um, I really try to keep it as, uh, inconspicuous as possible. Um, it allows me, you know, a little bit of freedom too. If I need to jog across the street or run across the street or get to another area where the light's better. I feel like I can get to those shots, um, a little bit easier. Um, but I don't, as far as like the kind of the hunting versus fishing, you know, it's two, two camps, I guess, in the street photography, um, uh, you know, realm is, you know, either you, you find some light and you kind of fish for it you kind of wait for that right subject to cross that light, or there's more of the hunting, uh, aspect where you're kind of just kind of roaming around. Um, and, and I guess I kind of do a little bit of both. I, I don't have the patience, uh, um, and or the time to just sit and wait all day for, for a shot to occur. Um, I definitely have my spots that I like to, to go to. Um, so I'll maybe have a plan that I, I get up in the morning and go to a certain area of the city and, and kind of, if that's not happening, I'll, I'll move to another part. But, um, uh, I definitely don't sit, sit, uh, sit still too often. Um, and I like to just keep, keep moving. And if the shot's not there, the shot's not there and I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Well, I'm guessing with all that said then that you, you've never really experienced any problems with the public when you've been taking pictures. No. And I feel, um, that that's, I'm mean, like knock on wood as I say that, but, um, but no, I, 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 I'm in the camp of it, you, you really bring, um, how you present yourself in a situation when you're at close proximity, you're making a photo really close to somebody. Um, even if he does potentially know that you're taking the photo, it's more about the, maybe the intent behind it. Um, and if you, if you seem like you're a little bit slimy or you, that this photo is going to go somewhere where they don't, where they don't want it to be, um, then there may be some pushback, I believe. Um, but I, I really believe that if you, if you bring good intent and yet you, you kind of carry yourself with confidence and you carry yourself with, um, a bit of, um, just, uh, yeah, it just, I think, uh, that kind of stuff is, is, um, it means a lot. And it's, it's more the, more what's not said than what's said when you're taking photography, I believe. Your website is broken down into locations. Um, what, what, what are your favorite locations? And have there been any that you were maybe excited about that didn't quite live up to your, um, your belief of what they were going to be like? 
Gosh. Um, I would say not really. I mean, I, I, I enjoy, and I hate to, I don't want to sound, uh, like this is, uh, um, wherever I am, I, I, I really make the best of it. And I, I've obviously been blessed to be able to go to some fun places. Um, this last year uh, I was in, um, you know, in, in Ireland and Italy, um, the year before that I got, a uh, actually no, uh, later that year I went to, got to Columbia. Um, so, um, I've, I've been blessed to be able to go to some areas that were, uh, very fun, very photogenic. Uh, the people were just amazing. So, um, Obviously, if, if you're talking about the, my favorite places to photog- to, to shoot photography, street photography, um, obviously New York. I know you've been there. Um, <laughs> that's just a uh, it's. There's a lot going on there, and that's going to really test your chops, um, people. And uh, there's just a lot of photographers there. But uh, I feel like there's no better place besides you know. There's there. There's Brooklyn. You know. There's there's areas around there that are just so much fun to to take photo uh, take photos at. Um, Italy, Italy was a blast. Um, had a blast. I went to like the Cinque Terre area on the West coast. Um, just the people were again, just amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so just, I've, I've been, been very blessed on some of the places I've been and super excited to, to see more and more. And New York, I think is one of those places that humbles you pretty quickly because, um, it's, it's like the opposite problem of most cities where it's quite hard to find a photo in New York. It's actually quite easy to the extent where it's hard to narrow down your choices. And I've found, I've visited there four years running um, over January or early February. And I always just find myself overwhelmed and I come back feeling slightly um, shit as a photographer because I feel like <laughs> I saw so much, but I captured so little. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a crazy city. And, um, I would, uh, I can't wait to get back there. And, um, I know it's, uh, you know, where everyone's a little bit uh, skittish on, on getting on planes and stuff right now, but, um, yeah, when I get back there, it's going to be fun to, to be able to explore some new, some new boroughs over there. So what is it that makes a city good for street photography? What does it have to have for it to sort of excite you as a street photographer? I think having, um, you know, I, I do like metro areas. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not as, um, I mean, currently I'm in, um, a small little, um, you know, 20,000 person town in the, on the coast of Oregon. And, um, I went out this morning, the street just to, to shoot some photos and stuff like that. And you, you kind of forget how much, uh, how much easier it is to shoot, you know, my type of photography when there's, uh, you know, uh, you know, 500 people walking each way on a, on a, on a, on a street and everyone's kind of worried about their own thing when you're, uh, in a small town like this. Um, it's, um, a little bit difficult. So I, I do, uh, when people say like, how do you, fo- how do you shoot photos the way you do? And it's just, it's definitely, um, it's definitely easier to shoot photography in, in markets that are definitely bigger. Um, it's fun to shoot photography against when you can really kind of juxtapose, you know, buildings and, and, uh, architecture against, you know, against man, against, against, you know, just the, to shows just the, um, you know, just the, the, the feeling of, how small we really are against uh, the environments that we're in. I think that's kind of one thing that's kind of fun to see. Do you feel like you need to know the city well to be able to get the most out of it photographically? Oof. Um, yes. I mean, I think, you know, doing your, doing your homework prior to going in is definitely um, something probably smart to do. Um, I mean, Instagram does a pretty, pretty good job of that. You can kind of chunk down different cities and different areas and different, uh, you know, looking at current, I mean, there's so many good photographers out there. I mean, you've talked to a lot of them. I mean, um, and you've done your due diligence and finding the best, best, but, um, you know, it's, there's a ton out there and, uh, just following people and, and Instagram does, that's one of the positive things about Instagram is, um, the ability to, to be able to find different areas and, uh, photographers and, you know, but you know, the way, the way light plays in different areas, I mean, that's going to take a couple of days to kind of understand is, you know, how the sun right. rises, how it ref- reflects, you know, that's stuff is that's, that's the part that's, you know, only the locals know. In terms of light, I think I'm a portrait photographer primarily and I photograph weddings and what I think is going to be great light and what you think is going to be great light based on your p- portfolio, I think is going to be different. What is it that's like the best light for you? It, <laughs> that's what I was going to say is you know some of our some of my photography like the harsh light like light that you'd probably like just like just cringe at um 
like I'm shooting a shot back against a kind of a protest that's coming towards me. I think it was a photo I shot sometime last week or two weeks ago. And it was such a, I love the shot because it was just, it was black on the sides of the street, but the sun was coming directly at this guy that was, that was marching towards me and he couldn't see, he probably couldn't even see me because I was stuck right in the light. And it was just a completely just harsh light, but it, it would just, it just, it just made that photo, the black and white photo look really amazing. So, you know, it, it, it is, and I'm definitely not a technician. I'm not classically trained on and anything in the arts. So, uh, for me to talk about light to someone like you would be just, it would be just comical. Who is it that's sort of your standout influences at the moment as a photographer? And, um, is, is there anyone that you're trying to emulate, I guess? Well, um, as soon as I, like I talked about a little bit earlier, the, the, um, I went through a workshop with Alan Schaller. I, I think, I think his work is, is phenomenal. Um, but as you, I'm a big fan of history and, and obviously photography has just the, um, you know, just larger than life, kind of that mid mid 20th century magnum photographer. You can kind of throw a, throw a rock at any one of them and they're all just amazing. Um, everyone always says like the Henri Cartier-Bresson, um, just those guys are just, just silly. Um, Bruce Davidson. Um, I got a book with me that I brought from, uh, from home on this trip, uh, the Joseph Kadelka. Um, he's just super inspiring to me right now. Um, and I was lucky in San Francisco. We had, we have the MoMA, um, and they had like an exhibit with Gary Winogrand for like two years straight. I want to say a couple of years back. And, and that guy is, um, someone that I could, I, I look at his, his, uh, stuff from the sixties and seventies and, um, just, uh, you just kind of are in awe of what they could do and, and the cameras that they had versus the cameras that we have today. And they're still making those photos still stand up so strong today. Um, but today, like I said, Alan Schaller, uh, there's a Joe Greer. He's a young, young kid, uh, like a yeah. photographer. Yeah. Um, he's amazing. Uh, you, you interviewed one of my favorites, uh, Hugh Rawson. You interviewed him twice. Yeah. Um, he is, he's a beast. Uh, Phil Penman, uh, in New York. Um, yeah. So there's, there's, there's a bunch of them out there and, and Instagram is just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, Hugh's a really interesting character cause he's very confident. Um, but he's also very, um, understated in the way that he, the way that you speak to him and, um, the way that he responds, his just his overall demeanor. He's very calm, very understated. And I think that that carries into a lot of his work as well. I think a lot of street photography really comes down to your demeanor. It, it does. And I've heard him speak a couple of times and, and two of them was with, with you. And, uh, it, just his background is so unique. I mean, being a headmaster and, um, he's just got kind of a fun background and just like you said, a fun demeanor. And, uh, it definitely comes across in his photography for sure. Do you have any intention of publishing any of your work in any zines or anything like that? Um, great question. Um, I, I don't have any intent as of now. Um, but, uh, that, that may be something I would cross eventually. Um, there is, you know, certain, when you get to a certain amount of portfolio of, of, of um, images and they all kind of run in a similar theme, the idea of doing a zine or, um, you know, I, I haven't really even got big into printing yet. Um, I've, I've done a few one-off, uh, prints for some friends and some families and some just people that have DM me and stuff like that. So doing a one-off, uh, you know, doing prints and stuff like that off some of my photos, but, um, I think it'd be fun. I think that's another way of kind of, um, you know, uh, chronicling, uh, what you're doing is to make a zine. And even if it, you aren't selling it just to, to keep it for future generations to look at, I think is always kind of a fun idea of, of looking at your, uh, your, your, uh, portfolio as a, as a whole. Well, I see, I mean, I'm, I'm very new to the street photography world in any sense, just, um, the way I see zines is they're kind of similar to an editorial in the sense that there should be some kind of through line, but there's lots of room for interpretation within it. I, 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 one thing I do have to say, I'm going to put this in here and I do apologize for this, but um, throughout this interview, it has felt like you're really selling yourself short. Um, I think you're comfortably one of the better photographers I've followed at all in any sense, whether it be like Instagram or through, through their actual work, me finding them um, in other means. I think you're by quite a distance, one of the best photographers that I follow. Um, and I don't think you're quite, I don't know whether it's a fun little act that you're doing, but you are a much better than you're setting yourself to be. And, and anyone that does end up listening to this really does need to go and check out your work because it is absolutely phenomenal. Well, to hear those words is, is uh, definitely puts a smile on my face and 
Um, as much as we do this, I think we all are in the photography area for, for ourselves a little bit, but it does feel good to get that external gratification. Um, and it's not the, not the gratification from likes on a, on a Facebook page, but it's stuff like that, that you just said. So I, I definitely appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see where this goes. It's an absolute honor to have had the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I want to make sure that everyone knows where they can go and see your work and be proven and I can be proven right when they do find it and see how good it is. So where's the best place for everyone to find what you do? Yeah, so two places. So on, on Instagram, it's always Chasing Daylight, and that's all spelled out. And then also I have a, a, a website, same name, alwayschasingdaylight.com. Absolutely amazing. Please do consider putting together a zine or some kind of print selling um, situation because I'm someone that would definitely be a customer straight up front. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's been um, really fascinating to listen to you. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Pleasure is mine. Thanks, Chris. Spit.